you for coming, of course. Uh, this presentation will talk about uh, a Flink library, an open source library for stream model serving based on PMML models. If you followed the presentation this early afternoon about the Flink ML project, this is sort of complementary talk. So I hope you will find it interesting. Uh, and that's it. OK. So let's start. Hi, and uh, thank you for coming. In the, um, all right. In the few last months, uh, during the development of the RNA, or Radical Bit Analytics Engine, developed by Radical Bit, which employed the most modern technology and Scala, and yes, of course, it adopted Ad Apache, Apache Flink with uh, your core, we have tried to find a solution for handle machine learning model in streaming in efficient way. So we have a different model from different sources, and we need a strategy to manage them. In literature, this is called model serving, or in your case, model serving repository. Model serving. Model serving it means provide a solution for continuous application for this case for a machine learning application. And the goal is the low latency, it's fast, and it's easy to integrate with Flink ecosystem. So we did this with Apache Flink. And so we realized this with uh, Apache Flink model serving system. OK. For the first release, the main point of this, the, uh, this version were a PMML-based model. So we, have, we opted to PMML because it's fully configurable, it's easy to use, and uh, it's uh, already used in the real world. PMML has a XML-based format, and it's designed for machine learning uh, pipeline by function declared inside the XML. So we used the JPMML wrapper in your library to handle this and the idea is starting from a very very well known and uh, standard and move on to generalize this uh, the feature it should be a lightweight operator so uh, the operator should be ready to use naturally to integrate in flink api and uh, really simple at the beginning. So we are looking for an addition for something that was light for the state. The operator is full configurable in pre and post process function uh, for, uh, and, uh, for give a programmer a simple tool. So this is implemented in the library with a pattern called uh, pimp my library in Scala. Generally, we want it to fa fast. OK, uh, in this slide, we show um, a first architecture of uh, Flink JPMML library. So the operator for the middle of the, of the picture, the operator in the startup phase, we create a single factory load, which load the model from the distribute system once, and then we'll deliver the model to task slot when they are demanded. So this evaluation is a lazy evaluation. After this phase, the operator is fully configurable for the user for handle various strategy, for example, model path, non prediction, and so on. After that, the input data stream will be converted in a Flink internal structure, Flink dense or sparse vector, similar to Breeze or another library. And uh, um, at the end of this pipeline, the user uh, taking output and user defined output and a prediction, a prediction that we represented with an uh, algebraic data type in Scala. So the, the library was included in the Flink JPMML project. So the Flink JPML, the Flink JML project is an open source project uh, as born in order with the aim to push the forward, the reboot of the machine learning uh, library. This project will take uh, other streaming tasks, uh, for example, streaming model serving, incremental learning, or machine le or online learning, and so on. OK, going back to your project, and uh, there were a lot of topics to deal with, but this is a long road ahead. <laughs> uh, so we started to think how to improve the library. 
So after this quiz, the main feature, we selected the main legs to track all. And uh, we isolated the free task. So keeping Flink JPMML dynamic. So that means that operator instance will retain its behavior for the whole lifetime. Single model, Flink JPML can load only model per operator. So that means if you want to evaluate more than your model, you need to put an, an uh, a instance of the operator in your code. Uh, for the first one, the fall intolerance. So we didn't integrate the Flink state backend on this version. So this is, is, this is as absolutely a must have. And we try to track all this in an easy way. So let's try to solve this, this problem with Andrea. OK. OK. C can you hear me? All right. So all right, here we go. So let's try to face the, the lags which Francesco explained. So basically, uh, basically, what we need now is a dynamic behavior of the system, which is quite static by now. So what we need is um, keep the Flink JPML operator uh, capable to, to follow the evolution uh, nature of the models. I mean, so a machine learning model can be deployed with the first version, and then it can change frequently along the time. And also, uh, another feature we, we want to add to the, to the operator is that uh, within the same operator, if I have an input stream A, um, the operator should be able to, to run several applications. For example, if you have a iris flower input data, and you want to apply a SBM model and a clustering model within the same operator instance, uh, you should be able to do it. All right. So uh, this kind of requirement brings uh, constraints. So first of all, we need somehow uh, to find a solution to match events and uh, models. So uh, we decided that the events, so the main input stream which needs to be evaluated uh, should bring the information about the model they need in order to be evaluated against. At the same time, uh, since we will have uh, many models within the same operator instance, uh, we need to keep trace of the global state of uh, the operator. Fine. All right. So the first concept is the control stream. So the, the older version of the Flink JPML operator has the parameterization concept. And we wanted somehow to retain this concept, but we switched it uh, to another stream. So and I saw during this day uh, that there, there are several applications which employ call functions, and we need as well. So we have a call function. The first stream is a, sorry, guys. All right. Um, the first concept is the control stream. So, uh, right. Uh, basically, um, <coughs> we extend the stream with a sort of protocol, uh, which is quite reachable by users. And uh, this protocol defines actions, actions uh, that will affect the, the state of the model and the state of the operator, of course. So uh, the messages basically bring some mandatory information like uh, identificator, which is the um, univoc identifier of the model, which is referred to, and then the path um, of the model. And then you can add additional info as metrics. Uh, you can add, for example, performance evaluation metrics if you want to add it and you want as an outcome, of course. So um, we don't use uh, the stream to bring models directly. And this decision was due to the fact that messaging queue system generally are not really fitting the problem to, to send large messages. Of course, you can do it, like Kafka provides a sort of configuration uh, features that you can bring large messages. And, but we wanted to keep it simple. So. The next step is where we are going to send this, uh, this control stream. We are broadcasting 
them. So we are broadcasting the messages. So with the main aim to give to each operator the same picture of the global state of the models. Uh, this is, for example, it, it will fit for uh, if you have a model repository server, then it should be a model repository server to, to lead the control stream generation in order to keep the operator aligned in terms of um, model global state solution. And with this control stream, which is broadcasted, I don't like it. Okay, um, which uh, we, with this uh, broadcasting, we are able to build uh, within each slot of our uh, task managers, we are able to, to build this metadata table. So basically, we don't store models um, since they are not requested. We store m a metadata table. The metadata table will uh, will match exactly the models uh, uh, which are um, stored in your underlying backend system, which can be HDFS, or for example, or Alexio. And so, since we are not keying the stream in our solution, we can use the keyed state. So, we are um, employing the operator state in order to, to provide full tolerance to to the operator. So, okay, I didn't like it. Okay, what about events? So the events um, basically are free to go to, to the operators in terms of the, the stream is not keyed, so the stream partitioning strategies of Flink um, will decide where these events should go. And each event, um, is enriched with a suffix which brings the model ID. So basically what it happens is that um, the events are leading uh, the loading of the model, the uploading of uh, the model. The, the event then must be enriched with a, with a sort of converter function in order to be ported in internal format, which is a Flink vectors one. So uh, when the event comes, what it happens is that it goes directly on the metadata table. And we implemented some hashing here so to keep it fast. And then if, if it finds the model, so it will be immediately evaluated. Otherwise, um, uh, the event triggers the uploading of the model from distributed backend. And then uh, after that, it starts with the with evaluation. Since the event has ID, and since the metatab table is broadcast, and, and so it's the same instance along all uh, the task manager and the task slot, of course, um, we are quite sure that uh, they will find a match. And so this kind of strategy, um, it's really open, right? So you can you can use the operator in several in several ways. Deep this brings um, strong uh, constraint. You mean, I mean uh, in in the sense that you th that you have to keep care of the global state of the operator, and this also can create maybe some jitter um, in milliseconds when the model, if the control message comes, and maybe the the event can be evaluated um, with the older version of the model. But if you have some QS policies which uh, allows you to do it, so that will not be a problem. What about <coughs> the checkpointing? So we enriched the older version with um, full tolerance capabilities. So uh, after, after the restoring phase, uh, we will have back um, the instances of the metadata table to each task uh, slot, and then what we do uh, is basically like just like the beginning, right? So if now a new event comes and it, it requires the model, it will be uploaded if it is not present within the instance of the operator. Right? Uh, so why we didn't uh, key the stream? Why we decided to, to go in, in this way? So basically, um, as was well introduced in Flink ML talk today. 
So you have two choices, so partitioning by keying or, or don't. Uh, if you do it, um, it, it really depends on your, on your application and your workload. Because if you have hundreds of models and they are evenly distributed in terms of workload, so that could be the right choice, right? So and that could be easy. But for example, if you have a large cluster and you have, maybe you have a lot of models, but there is only one model which is evaluated for the 99% of your uptime, that would be uh, not really optimized. So they are both worth to be implemented. We started uh, from, from this vision. So we are handling with tens, uh, dozens of uh, models, um, maybe not more. And so we let Flink distribute the main event stream and find the right model to be evaluated against. OK. And so this is the final picture of the version, which is not really open source, but uh, I hope uh, to make it, uh, we can make it at the end uh, of this week. <laughs> and so basically, we have uh, two streams. So we have a cooperator. And then we have uh, the control streaming, which is broadcasted. And then we have events, we, which are calling the lazy uploading of model by the distributed backend. So the operator is still um, configurable by, by the user. Uh, the user can decide how to handle null values and input. You can use sparse factor and then decide which kind of value you give to your null values. And then you can decide how is defined your outcome. Uh, we, we model the, the prediction as ADT, so you will find an empty score if the model uh, is not present uh, when the event arrives. Yeah, yeah, this is... Okay. What is going next? So our priority is absolutely the Flink ML project. Today the chatting is running, and so we hope to, to keep together. This is a really interesting project, I think, and uh, it would be really awesome if someone of you want to participate, wanted to, to, to join to this, um, to this project. It would be really nice. In terms of Flink GPMML, uh, of course, at the end of the week we publish, and, and then there are other kind of problems we, we should handle, uh, like uh, polymorphism. By now, uh, the operator is quite... Uh, <coughs> chained by doubles, let's say, if you have, for example, to handle with categoricals, that would be quite tricky to implement, not impossible, but tricky. And also, the outcomes really, really change in behavior depending on um, the, the model you are employing, as one is so different in respect of a clustering, for example, of a neural network. And, and also, another Another stuff that it's worth to be implemented is also the kids solution one, which can fit better some um, some problems. All right. So now we'll try to show just a quick demo. Obviously, it doesn't work. So how can I mirror the, the screen? I'm able to mirror? Oh my god. It would be better, right? Because I don't see here. Yeah, it would be great. You can open it. Yeah. Mm, 
Ah, oh, cool. All right. So now I will have to zoom in. Ah, all right, that's cool. All right. No, it didn't. Ah, view? Two windows? All right. Okay. So, uh, so basically what we need to do now is uh, to create the streams. So basically we read uh, pixels, uh, which comes from an image, um, and then we made this event source, which is the main event stream. So they are, so they are basically generated from those files, and then um, they not bring still information about um, the ID, which is here, uh, of the model they need. Hmm? And now it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so shall we? Maybe exit? All right. And then there we go. OK. Um, from the other side, we take uh, uh, the model path from socket, um, just for keep it easy. So we will write from socket the, um, uh, the, the model path, which are, in this case, uh, pointing to the file system. Uh, and then we are going to uh, reaching the stream uh, by the version, and here we are going to set uh, the event ID, uh, the, the event model ID, uh, in base of they come to they come to the system. So this is a simple solution. I, I will show you how it works. So exit. <laughs> All right, we can do it. Okay, and and then at the end you have the control stream. The control stream, basically, in this case, I'm just creating add messages. I will not go, you know, otherwise I will do uh, again. The <laughs> and but at the end we have. We have a data stream of serving message, which is uh, the ADT, which is modeling the, the control stream, basically. And then how, and down now uh, we, can, we can program basically with the operator. How it works, the operator. So you have to select um, the mainstream, and then you can enrich it with the control stream. And then what you can do is to call the evaluator model. And then what you have here, what you have here is basically a user-defined function where the user can <coughs> apply uh, pre-processing, post-processing to, to the values. So what, what you can do here is, uh, what you should do here if you want prediction, and is uh, um, basically you take the event, and then I cleverly prepared the two vector method, which um, basically convert it to a dense vector. So I take uh, x and y from the pixel, uh, r and g, sorry, and then I, I put it in, um, I put it in, in a dense vector. And then, 
and then we we're going to extract the prediction. So we keep the model, and then we predict it with the we predict the vector with that model. And it's simply, and then you declare your outcome, which in this case we do. And that's all. Uh, in the out in the output, we will find. You will find the um, the um, the prediction, and then we here we do so so output normalization uh, because uh, it is as well they are as well models so the outcome with a with a vector product uh, at the output so we normalize them and then uh, we compute the accuracy. Uh, point by point as they come. So now I will run it and I want to go out from here. Alright, why is complaining? Ooh, I need extensions. Say that there. Alright. All right, here we go. Okay. So what what I should do now is uh, finding my terminal. All right. Oh no, presentation more here. So okay, I open a socket, and uh, from here I will send the models. All right. Uh, basically, what I'm doing. Here is to write to file uh, each stream in order to show you, uh, and then I can start. I think we can start. Uh, just run away. All right. I see. All right. So the job is running. And now we we can we can send the first PMML model. So I use my resource. I take the first one and I send it here. All right. So let's see our output. Okay, so so basically, this is the uh, the mainstream, right? You see, uh, the identification, the identifier of the model is combined by a model application identifier and a version. So you can have multiple model applications. Um, each of these applications can have several versions, and you can choose which kind of version you come. The only thing you need to do is to enrich the event, which is the pixel, with uh, I'm okay uh, with the um, with the model ID. And then those are the predictions. Okay, they come with the event, and then the prediction score. Then I normalize it. And then I compute uh, here accuracy. So this model it assessed around 48% of accuracy. So now I will send another model. And then uh, if um, I'm sending another model, and what I'm doing is uh, create an event for each model. So let's say I want to predict the same event with model 1 and model 2, because I want to do a comparison, for example. Here we go. Hope it works. OK. So here uh, the main event. You see the events are starting also to come out with the um, with identifier, which is quite changed in version. And then you have the prediction. You can see anything by here. And then here. So basically, what it happens here is if you, you have uh, two Accuracy metrics 
for each version. And you can see that the second one, the second version is increasing in terms of accuracy. It should assess around 70%, uh, I hope. But uh, I mean, uh, in the future. And, and OK, uh, now maybe we can add uh, another model. And again, um, we will compute the same event with all the uh, models we have available on the system. And it should be, at the, I guess. OK. And this one is the highest in terms of performance. So can you show a PMML model base, for example? Uh, the, the uh, SWM model. OK, let's see the SWM model, yes. of course. The format. Yeah, this is the SWM. So go to the hell. All right. So basically, this is a SWM model. Uh, you have GR. Basically, the, the original uh, application was predicting skin. So actually, the outcome is skin, either not skin. And then you have your SWM model, which is this model was trained by R, and so it was exported by R library. Uh, and they are different in terms of performance. In this case, so we have uh, one model application, and then you can um, deploy several versions of this application. You can make update by uh, adding a newer version, or either you can um, uh, you can evaluate two versions of the same model application. We could make it the opposite, right? So deploy one version for different model application. All right. I really hate this. OK, so basically, this is what I have to show you. And then, yeah, the, the output was, was basically just normalization. Uh, and that's it. So let's go back to the presentation. All right. So Fringe PMML library uh, was born just uh, started to be developed at the end of the last year, and then by some uh, early contributors. And then, uh, as we entered the radical bit, we, we started to, to push forward the project. And so I want to thank, we want to thank you also, the radical bit guys that helped us to, to the library. And please, don't lose the presentation of the a new and super cool database, streaming um, <laughs> time series database, uh, which is going tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. And yeah, that's fine. OK, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. <laughs> Questions? Thank you for your talk. I think um, this is really the natural way for Flink to go is in, in the machine learning direction is really model serving. So I have one question um, about do you also have online learning models like which uh, still continue learning or um, does P PML only provide static models? No, by now, by now the PML is in purely evaluation. I don't know. So we take the model and then we evaluate stream. Yeah. Uh, and this is the this is the, the main task of the of the model loaded within the operator. So I don't know if. Uh, so I think if for line learning you need to apply both logic and then you have to update manually your model. Yeah. Uh, in terms of factors, so by now we we don't. Okay. Yeah. And that could be. Uh, a good task for the Flink ML project yeah. globally. Yeah. Because I was wondering, you were talking that you're not checkpointing the model, but 
when you're not really changing the model, then you don't need to checkpoint it, right? Yeah, uh, we need to checkpoint because we checkpoint the metadata, and, and then if you if you lose the job, basically you have to resend all the history of the of the models uh, you had by control messages. Okay. So we keep the the metadata table, and then we restore it. Uh, by this, you have again the picture you had of the underlying system of models. Okay. Thank you for your talk. Thank again. you too. Any other? Anyone? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thank you.